Hello there! Welcome back. It seems you found me in a bit of a... predicament. You see, two months ago, I set off on a mission to EVE. And not just any EVE, a mission to a modded EVE with twice the gravity, twice the radius, twice the atmospheric pressure, and, well, eight times the pain, let's say. And, well, to put it bluntly, it didn't go too great. <laughs> Tragically, my lander, the Waluigi Prime, failed to reach orbit many times. Did I ever tell you what the definition of insanity is? Insanity is doing the exact same fucking thing over and over again, expecting shit to change. And consequently, Rogan Kerman is stranded on Eve and can no longer make episodes of the Rogan Kerman experience. Tragic, I know. But today, that shall change. Today, he shall return. And today, I shall complete the challenge that I set out to do. But before we do any of that, a quick recap. You see, back in March, I created an extremely cursed Eve using Copernicus. And long story short, I sent a mission there, landed on its moons, failed to escape from it, and didn't play KSB for nearly two months afterwards due to my entire motivation to play the game being killed. Okay, you got that? Good. However, just last week, I suddenly decided, you know... Let's give this another try, cause... Reasons? And so, here we are. And accordingly, here is our new vessel to rectify our past mistakes. The SEL2 Steamer, Super Eve Lander-2, alternate designation Wario Prime, wow. called that to avoid any association with helicopters and to convey the environment of Eve. Right away, you may notice one thing. The lack of fins. And that's because, rather begrudgingly, I've decided to turn to the dark side a little bit and make use of the fairing engine plate exploit. You were the chosen one! It was said that you would destroy this! Arrow exploits. Not join them! Courtesy of our Lord and Savior, Lieutenant Duckweed, to reduce drag, which is extremely helpful for a mission somewhere like Eve. At one point, I also considered doing some real voodoo shit, like making a heat shield wing craft or something, but I decided against it. Another notable thing about this lander is that the helicopter blades just straight up have rockets on them now to better detach, which so far has entirely prevented them from destroying the rocket on detachment in order to prevent, uh, this from happening again. You know, in order to save me hours and hours of suffering. I then ran a quick test and successfully launched it into low EVE orbit, which, funny enough, I never did with the Waluigi Prime, and yet I somehow thought that would work. <laughs> now let's add a bunch of physics-defying heat shields with, uh, heat shields of their own, and let's launch! Let's once again sit through an incredibly exciting series of burns. Um, I actually removed the persistent thrust mod because it was causing this weird issue where the engine would just sputter multiple times before actually lighting. And let's land! 
probably a few hundred kilometers away from Rogan again, because I couldn't be bothered to do a real pinpoint landing. <laughs> Whatever. That's why we have the saltine cracker, after all. During the descent, I managed to get rid of the heat shield assembly without exploding 100 times first. And, well, would you look at that? I've actually figured out how to hover this thing without dying. Just set the deploy angle to barely above zero. Fascinating! Listen, I fly planes, not helicopters, alright? Now that the steamer is safely on the surface of EVE, let's have Rogan Kerman fly the saltine cracker there. Again! After some initial difficulties in convincing him to go due to his discovery that breathing EVE's atmosphere has a psychedelic effect in very small quantities, Rogan Kerman finally set off for the steamer's landing site, which, rather poetically, is very close to where the saltine cracker had first touched down. Uh, let's check the time. More than five years ago now. Hmm. Upon arriving, we once again went through the whole refueling process and all that good stuff. And then it was finally time to leave Eve once and for all. Uh, fuck, that didn't work. Despite being incredibly stable in testing, the steamer proved to be almost impossible to control after taking off. Which I later discovered was due to me not auto shredding everything correctly, apparently. Uh, crisis averted, uh, actually no. Bruh. Oh no. Eventually, after some frustration and reconsideration of my life choices, I discovered that, for whatever reason, one of the propeller blades decided to be a menace to society and had its deploy angle set in the wrong direction, which resulted in it single-handedly causing the entire craft to spin out of control immediately after takeoff. After that whole debacle had been resolved, it was finally time to leave Eve. For real this time. Uh, actually, I'll just cut to the chase and say that I had two failed attempts. Because one time I had to detach the blades early, at an altitude of 13 Ooh, kilometers compared small. to the optimal altitude of 17 to 18, because I ran out of electricity. And another time I just flew a bad turn and failed to reach orbit. And get straight on to the actual ascent, which was by far the single most exhilarating thing I've ever done in this game. Like, hands down. Just like that, I had done it. I had successfully gotten a Kerbal off of EVE with double the gravity and double the radius and double the atmosphere. Okay, you get the point. Despite all the bullshit I went through to do it, all the times I wanted to call it quits, all of the hours I spent doubting whether it was even possible, I have yes! finally done it. And you know how? By always sticking with it and trying again. If at first you don't succeed, just try, try again. The greatest ability one can possess is an inability. The inability to give up. Every time you may face a setback or fall down, get back up. 
It is only through failure, after all, that we can truly grow as people. Now I want you to repeat after me right now. Never give up! Okay, thank you for listening to my TED Talk. Motivational speech over. After reaching orbit and promptly breathing a gigantic sigh of relief, I had Rogan Kerman make his way to the Chair of Hope, and as a little celebration, and because I missed it in the last video, Rogan Kerman then took the Chair of Hope to Gilly, which is by far the most picturesque place in the whole game now. I mean, just look at that, that's awesome. After admiring from afar the planet that had held him captive for so long, he then departed the EVE system entirely, and we triumphantly made our way back to Kerbin. After... eight years in-game. Holy crap, man. Rogan, I'm sorry. The amount of podcasts you could've made in that time. Once we reached low Kerbin orbit, a friend of mine suggested that I just deorbit now, and land without a parachute, because I removed it to save weight. Originally, I was just gonna set up a small return craft to retrieve Rogan Kerbin, but you know what? Sure. Let's go splash down in the ocean with no parachute. Belly flops are fun, after all, and not painful. And with that, the mission came to an end. Rogan Kerman was back on terra firma, and Eve had been conquered. Thanks for watching, and never give up! I'm gonna go get hammered now. Uh, actually, quick note. The planet pack for this is now public, link in the description. And so is my Discord server, finally, also link in the description. Cause I want to run a little competition here to see who can complete this challenge, as well as some other stuff like who can do it with the lowest mass craft, etc. Okay, bye!